first used the web uh, early 2012. It was a, a very amazing technology because it allowed us to put inside the aneurysm a basket which was supposed to uh, disrupt the flow entering in the aneurysm. It allowed us to treat some broad-based aneurysm located at the bifurcation, which are those aneurysms the most difficult to be treated. We immediately realized that uh, this kind of device was uh, simplifying a lot the treatment of those uh, difficult uh, aneurysms. It was amazing that uh, the web has evolved all along those uh, 12 or 13 years. The first generation of the web was a double chamber in order to stop the flow entering inside the aneurysm. The price to pay was a web which was uh, fitting with a large bore microcatheter. So the first evolution was to remove the first chamber and then uh, it allowed to decrease the size of the web when delivering it. It was a tremendous change because uh, you have to know that the first web they were fitting in a catheter which were larger than 35 or 36. So the first evolution was to make it fitting within the uh, 27, even the 21. And then we have another important evolution, which was the uh, enhanced visualization with a 19 old DFT, which was really uh, better for us because it allowed us to, to see the web, uh, not only on the vaso CT, but also on the, on the fluoroscopy and under the run. The last evolution of the web came in 2017 with the web 17, which was a very important improvement because it was uh, making it uh, fitting within the 17 microcatheter, which are those microcatheter we use for coiling aneurysms. Dealing with those microcatheter has allowed us to treat more distal aneurysms and of course some smaller aneurysms. Most of them were uh, ruptured aneurysm which were not treated before because these small sizes were not uh, available. Never before you had a, a new device which was uh, so extensively uh, studied through clinical study. So all along this evolution, technical evolution of the web, you had clinical assessment of the efficiency and the safety of the web. It's amazing how safe is the web, you know. You have now some clinical study if, uh, assessing the, the, the occlusion rate five years after the treatment, both in United States and uh, in Europe. The flow disruptor, they require time to get the thrombosis and the cure of the aneurysm. So at the beginning, we were treated only non-ruptured aneurysms. Progressively, because of the easiness uh, to use, we were tempted to use some ruptured aneurysm with a large neck. This is why uh, was designed the CLARI study, which was uh, specifically uh, done to show that there was no early uh, re-rupture. Definitively now, the, the web and the web 17 is used everywhere in the world to treat uh, ruptured aneurysm, mostly uh, located at the bifurcation uh, with, a, with a large neck. At the very beginning, it was uh, done mostly by the, the senior physician, but very, very quickly, all the, the, the physicians uh, were using the web, and especially the young generation, they love the, the web because they have immediately understood that it's easy to use and it's very safe. Especially when you have to deal with ruptured aneurysm, uh, it allows to treat uh, some uh, difficult aneurysm in a very quick and a very safe uh, way. I would advise the young generation to first use the web in typical indication. Typical indication mean an aneurysm which is centered at the level of a bifurcation and with not too high angulation between the main feeder and the axis of the aneurysm. So except some uh, few indications uh, at the level of the carotid siphon, a sidewall aneurysm is not a typical indication to use the web. principle is to oversize the, the web to provide a constraint, a lateral constraint to the, to the web when it's deployed inside the aneurysm. Roughly, you have to oversize in width 
and uh, you compensate in height because when you compress laterally, you increase the height of the aneurysm. So it's something which is a little bit easy, like choosing the size of a coil. You may have uh, two sizes which could fit uh, within, the, within the sack of the aneurysm. Nowadays, in the department, we are routinely using the simulation from Cement Cure, which is uh, very easy to, to get. And it allows us to simulate uh, different uh, sizes of the web and then the physician they can make their decision after simulating different uh, position of the web, different sizing of the web. It's really important to oversize the web in width and it's obvious uh, in our experience that having such uh, a way to do improve our uh, result. If you look at the, the total occlusion rate within the Clever study in the ruptured group, you reach 80% of a complete occlusion at one year because all the center now they apply this uh, strategy of oversizing the web. The next challenge for the, the web is a clinical challenge because uh, you all know that uh, the web has proven to be efficient and, uh, and safe. Now, we'll be uh, starting a new study, which is a randomized study, comparing the safety and the efficiency of the web directly to the other endovascular technique in ruptured aneurysm. And I'm very curious about the result of this uh, study, which is, uh, believe me, very challenging.